Hello, welcome to Wilcox Nursery and Landscape. I'm Bruce Turley, the owner, and this is where we are focused on native plants and sustainable products and practices. We're going to be talking about native plants and identifying and getting you familiar with some of our native plants. So we're going to do a segment where we do some points of interest around the nursery and talk about some of the plant displays that you can see uh, plants grown out. So the uh, question always arises is what is a native plant? A native plant would be a plant that occurred here naturally prior to European uh, contact here in the New World. And why do we plant native plants? Uh, native plants have adapted the diversity of environments we have in Florida, and in so they are able to help us reduce our input from fertilizers, pesticides, and they're really fantastic for providing sustainability from our pollinators at the whole chain of life. And they, of course, give us a sense that we know where we are as opposed to anywhere else on the globe. This area is our bog garden display. Uh, what we have canoping in this area is Swamp Bay. Uh, the Swamp Bays, unfortunately, are one of the group of bays that's being uh, really hard hit by the laurel wilt. Uh, typically, we're not planting these trees these days, even though it is one of my favorite trees and ecologically a very important tree. It is a larval plant for palamedes and uh, spicebush swallowtails. It's also a great bird tree with the uh, fruit that it produces that the birds will use. And you can use it as a bay leaf, European bay leaf alternate for cooking, uh, using the leaf as a bay leaf. Anyway, this tree came up as a seedling, so we let it grow and we feel like as long as it can live here, uh, it really can serve its ecological purposes. It's just not a tree that we can promote a whole lot for landscape these days because of the unfortunate situation with the laurel wilt. Uh, what we have here in this uh, wet garden is uh, one of our common native ferns, swamp fern. I find swamp fern to be one of the most adaptable of our native ferns and is really a good landscape plant for landscapes that maybe aren't as wet as uh, some areas might be where it naturally occurs. A lot of the landscape conditions that are more average as opposed to wet, it tends to hold the plant more in check. It can aggressively spread in wetter areas, but again, it's a, it's a very easy growing fern. Mixed in here with the swamp fern is some more of the uh, swamp lily or crinum lily. Unfortunately, I don't have any here right now that's in bloom, but you can see the flower buds getting ready to open on that specimen. You can also see the bulblet that it produces after the flower, which is a great way for being able to grow more of the plants. They uh, propagate pretty readily, and it's just, it's a really nice plant. The, the flowers have a really wonderful fragrance to them, and they're very showy. Uh, they bloom off and on throughout the year, and uh, again, you just need a wetter environment for it. In a case like this, we've created a wet uh, landscape uh, setting by putting a liner in this area uh, and putting some topsoil in here so it retains moisture well. That is a really wonderful way that you can grow things that your landscape might be too dry for otherwise, where you want something that uh, gives you some of the diversity of the wetland species. Another plant that's growing in this area that uh, it's kind of just rambling through the planting is our native wild plumbago. Wild plumbago is naturally occurring throughout our area and through into South Florida. Uh, it produces a plumbago style flower. They're a little smaller than the non-native ones that people are so familiar with, but uh, this one has these white flowers. Again, the Cassius blue butterfly comes to this plant when it's blooming. And it can be used in a variety of ways. In the wild, it tends to clamor up uh, plants that are near it as it's kind of doing even in this bog setting. Uh, you can use it as a ground cover. You can trim it kind of like a dwarf shrub. And you can also espalier it or train it up on a trellis. I've had it growing up the boots of my cabbage palms in my own yard. The blooms would uh, come out right at eye level. Kind of a nice charming effect. In the front of our bog garden is this plant, which is hammock twin flower, also known as swamp twin flower. 
Again, I really prefer personally the common name of hammock twin flower because it grows in a diversity of conditions, not necessarily always wet. Uh, it is a pretty adaptable plant and uh, it will grow in reduced light as well as full sun. The more sunlight that it gets, the more moisture it needs. It has this little lavender bloom on it and uh, just has a really nice dense foliage and this has rapidly become one of our most popular selling ground covers. Excellent turf replacement uh, in the landscape where you really want a very nice looking ground cover and typical of uh, ground covers that have really good qualities. This one can be walked on, it can be mowed, it can be edged, so it can really be cultivated into a really attractive plant. In this area, adjacent to the bog garden, we're still in a shaded area of the nursery. And one of the plants that we uh, have that really gives a great texture to the landscape is one of our small native palms. This particular one is sable miner or blue stem palmetto or dwarf palmetto. Um, I like to say that this one is user friendly because it's totally smooth. There's no thorns or spines on it. And uh, it tends to stay smaller than something like a saw palmetto would. And again, it's a very adaptable and easy growing plant. You can grow it in really deep shade. You can grow it where there's a lot of root competition. You can grow it in hot open parking lots and it'll adapt to just about anywhere you want to use it. It'll take wet to moist conditions, very dry conditions, salt, wind, the whole bit, and it's really well adapted for it. Uh, of course, being a sable, it kind of looks a little bit like a short cabbage palm. It's taller cousin or in our state tree in Florida. But uh, this one tends to have a limited size. I have some in my own landscape at home that came from some rescue plantings. Uh, and it is a really ancient plant that is no taller than a little over my waist height. This one, as you might be able to see, is at my head height, which is a little bit to the larger end on some of our Florida populations. There are uh, populations of this species of palm growing in areas like Louisiana that actually develop a trunk, whereas our native uh, uh, populations of this plant never develop a trunk. They're always a short bush. So you get this nice sort of a tropical looking texture that really breaks up the other textures in a landscape. It produces flowers, again, that the pollinators will use, and it produces a fruit uh, that, again, the birds and other animals can use. And it's just a super hardy, really kind of a nice signature piece plant for giving a sense of place that you're in Florida. Kind of like the, uh, the dwarf palmetto or blue stem palmetto, this one is another small native palm. This one is needle palm. Um, much like uh, Kunti, which we discussed earlier, this one was historically exploited quite a bit years ago where they were dug up in the woods. That's a real no-no and it really diminished quite a bit of the populations in the wild. Um, there are some areas where you can really see some nice wild populations of this plant, but what made it so popular is that it's a very regal and very dressy looking little bushy palm. And again, it really likes those dark understories. It does like a bit of moisture. It's not quite as adaptable to really dry conditions as the uh, sable miner or dwarf palmetto is, but um, but this one is just a really pretty palm. And again, this one's getting fairly close to maturity like the dwarf palmetto. Again, it doesn't develop trunks. Um, it will get to about head high, maybe a little bit better than that, but it's just a short shrub compared to so many palms that become arborescent. Uh, the term needle palm comes from the fact that on the trunk, the fiber on the trunk turns into a long, sharp needle. Those needles are not on the petiole of the leaves. It's not a thorn on the leaf. So again, it's relatively safe and easy to have in the landscape. You just don't want to jam your hand down into that needle that's on the trunk. Right above the needle palm is a very widespread native species of dogwood. This one is common throughout Florida, uh, all the way from the Everglades through to North Florida and certainly native to our area in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, this one is just about at mature height. Uh, typically maybe 10 or 12 feet, a kind of a shrubby form of uh, dogwood. The um, 
Swamp dogwood, as the name would indicate, comes from moist to wet areas. It's somewhat adaptable, but you don't want to put it in a really dry or really a hot, sunny, stressful area. It typically is in some degree of understory unless it's in a really wet environment. Uh, the leaves do get some nice foliage color in the late fall. It is deciduous, so it'll drop its leaves in the fall. And prior to that, it usually gets a little color. Uh, the flowers are kind of that typical dogwood style, but they're just not maybe quite as showy as flowering dogwood, but they really make a, a beautiful statement just the same. It also produces berries. I see some immature green berries on this right now. And again, the berries produce a nice fruit for the songbirds and can add a nice attraction to the plant as well. So again, swamp dogwood, uh, it's a good alternative to flowering dogwood. Much more widespread through Florida, it grows throughout the state of Florida. And um, you know, it's a, it's a large bush or small tree, so you can actually limb it up as a tree form and just makes a great alternative where you need something that's a small tree. So that's our tour of our little vignettes here at the nursery. And if you really want a dynamic 365, 24-7, Plant native plants in your landscape, like our fire bush here and our goldenrods, and you will bring all kinds of life to your landscape.